So good afternoon and welcome everyone to AFA's live discussion on promoting apprenticeships to SMEs. In today's event, we will talk about policy, campaigns, and different instruments used to involve SMEs in apprenticeships programs across Europe. We have the privilege to have with us representatives from an SME to regional authorities and a representative of SME United, a new level social partner association representing in SMEs employers. But before I introduce our panelists and we get to the discussion, why is it today's topic important? Because small and medium-sized enterprises are considered as the backbone of the European economy. They employ around two-thirds of its workforce and they represent 99% of the businesses. Therefore, SMEs play a vital role in all changes we want to achieve, notably the shift towards a climate neutral economy and the digitalization. So they are key in bringing innovative solutions to challenges like climate change, resource efficiency and technology adaptation. And therefore they add value in every sector. SMEs are also essential to ensure Europe's competitiveness and prosperity and to develop industrial ecosystems, economic and technological sovereignty and resilience to external shocks. However, they face significant barriers to stay competitive in a business environment which has been impacted by external shocks such as the pandemic and, and the war in Ukraine. So more than 90% of European SMEs consider themselves lagging behind in digital innovation. And SMEs also have some potential to make their businesses greener, considering that only one in four has a concrete plan in place to reduce their, their carbon footprint. So in this, in this context, we consider apprenticeships uh, as a key element, a key instrument, because they help businesses to develop a pool of highly skilled employees uh, with tailored skills to the specific needs of the company that have the potential to improve competitiveness in, in the SMEs. They also allow the employer to shape a young person's uh, work habits and to retain motivated and qualified employees. Apprenticeships also help bring in new ideas and perspectives uh, from young people and to um, uh, accompany learning and contribute to an inspiring workplace culture. But despite all these benefits, many SMEs are still reluctant to engage in training apprentices. And the reasons for that are varied. It could be an unfavorable business environment, burdensome legislation on, or some internal limitations. For instance, smaller companies, especially micro enterprises, cannot always afford to manage administrative requirements of uh, apprenticeships or make it staff available to supervise the apprentices. They may also not have the necessary equipment to be able to cover all aspects of the training required for a given occupation. So also lack of information, training culture or a sense of ownership may further prevent an SME to take part in, in these programs. And regional authorities, who we, who we will hear uh, from today, can play also a key role in facil facilitating uh, SME participation. So at EU level, what are we trying to do? Uh, we are trying to address these obstacles uh, through different tools. Uh, notably through awareness raising and knowledge sharing in networks like EAFA, like we are doing today, with quality frameworks uh, to encourage member states to increase quality and effectiveness of their apprenticeships, and also with the support of significant EU funding uh, available. And uh, on this, uh, you know already that we have multiple funding instruments that could be used one way or another, but the most relevant one in this case is the European Social Fund Plus, which is the main instrument to invest in human capital. So measures included in ESF Plus programs are varied and it's really up to the member state and the regions in agreement with the commission to decide how to better use these resources to address regional challenges. Some of these possibilities uh, are to support vocational education and training and apprenticeships, 
And uh, in order to do that, some countries and some regions opt to um, co-fund uh, apprenticeship programs, including, for instance, uh, with hiring incentives for the companies, social security rebates, subsidies for the staff supervising apprentices, um, among other possibilities. So next year, next year, we want to put the spotlight on skills. We acknowledge um, there is a context in which there are many opportunities uh, to seize the potential of the digital and green transitions. And we are also aware that uh, we are facing challenges in Europe uh, related to the energy crisis, the skill shortages, the demographic changes. So we consider it's time to step up our efforts uh, in terms of upskilling and reskilling. And that is why uh, we have proposed next year to be the European Year of Skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, the objectives of the European of Skills uh, Year of Skills are uh, to promote more and uh, more effective uh, and inclusive investments, to make sure that skills are relevant uh, for labor market needs, also in cooperation with social partners and companies, to match people's aspirations with the skill sets and the opportunities on the job market, especially in view of the green and digital transition, and attracting people from third countries with the skills needed in the EU, including by strengthening learning opportunities and mobility, and facilitating the recognition of qualifications. So, in this context, apprenticeships are an essential tool for young and adults to acquire the skills uh, needed also for SMEs and that's why next year it will be important also in this respect. What can I tell you more about the year that um, we made our proposal the Commission and now the decision is still under, under negotiation in the European Parliament and Council and in the meantime we are preparing uh, the program and the communication material so you can all engage in the year by raising awareness, triggering reflections and organizing events um, among other activities. So stay tuned. We will keep you posted about what we are cooking uh, on the on the year. And now, um, before we start with our discussion, I would like to turn to our audience. Um, so throughout the event, please feel free to leave comments or ask questions in the chat during the event, and we will make our best to raise these to our panelists during our Q and A session at the end. And now I will uh, start uh, presenting uh, our panelists. I will start with uh, Miriana Bucalosi uh, from Tuscany region. Uh, she's in charge uh, for apprenticeships, internships, dual learning and EU projects uh, at Tuscany region and within uh, the EU Association of Regional local, and Local Authorities for Lifelong Learning, she coordinates the working group Youth Policies. Our second panelist is Sergio Corridori. Uh, Sergio works as head of HR at Castello di Fonteuroli in Chianti Classico, a, a company owned by the Marchesi Matsei family and well known in the European wine sector. Then we have Paula Zaplana who is working to improve the competitiveness of her region and to support workers through upskilling and reskilling projects. Uh, in her role, she also collaborates with local, national and European authorities, as well as with social partners and businesses. And she works in PIMEC, the Catalan Small and Medium Business Association. And our last panelist is uh, Valentina Guerra who works in the area of social affairs, social dialogue, migration, education and skills, and of course, including apprenticeships uh, at SME United, the European Employers Organization representing crafts and SMEs. So thank you very much all for being here. I think it will be a very rich discussion. So thank you for being available and, and taking the time to participate. And I'm sure uh, our participants uh, will uh, be grateful for, for your interventions. So our discussion will cover three blocks. 
we will start with uh, your experiences and examples on promoting apprenticeships among SMEs. Then we will switch to the obstacles and challenges that you are facing. And then we will take stock and, and try to draw some lessons learned and, um, and recommendations. So first things first, we will start with the experiences. And uh, I would like to start uh, uh, with Valentina Guerra uh, from SME United. So Valentina, we would be really interested in, in getting to know more uh, about what SME United does uh, with uh, its 70 member organizations uh, to promote apprenticeships. Uh, Valentina, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Anna, and I would like uh, also to give a, a warm welcome to all the participants online and um, and to the panelists. We are very happy to participate this afternoon in this uh, uh, very important debate. Indeed, uh, uh, our members are very supportive of apprenticeship, um, and this has been since the beginning of, uh, of SME United. And in particular, in 2020, uh, we decided even to work um, more intensively on uh, on this topic and following the state of the union uh, speech in uh, uh, 2021 of the president of the european commission Ur ursula von der leyen our general assembly decided to to contribute to the european year of youth uh, by conducting specific activities in the framework of a dedicated annual theme on uh, youth and skilled workforce and we organized two events and we gathered best practices all along the year uh, to provide a better insight into what uh, our members are doing in the, in different member states. And the first debate, uh, which took place on the 19th of May, was about a apprenticeship and we even had the opportunity to exchange with uh, Commissioner Schmidt uh, during the, the, the Vocational Skills Week and uh, one of our major objectives uh, with this debate was to reflect uh, on how SMEs can better attract more young people um, uh, through the apprenticeship and, and tackle the labor shortages and skill matches, mismatches that uh, they are experiencing uh, more and more. And this was also the opportunity to highlight that in several member states, apprenticeship has uh, always been one of the main pillars uh, of the school to work transition and one of the most effective ways to provide young people uh, with the on the job learning. And this is very important for SMEs because it, it really provides the necessary supply of skilled uh, workforce. We also organized the second debate on the topic of uh, entrepreneurship because we very much link uh, apprenticeship and, and entrepreneurship. Uh, because we see how an apprenticeship can really um, support young people to acquire those entrepreneurial uh, skills that we would like to see uh, embedded in education pathways uh, since the very, a very early age. Finally, as I said, we collected also um, uh, a number of best practices from our members uh, on, on different topics, for example, the promotion of apprenticeship, uh, promotion of entrepreneurship, uh, how to best use EU funds, uh, how to promote the youth guarantee, and for example, also uh, orientation and council services uh, directly targeting young people. And we we will uh, just uh, publish in the next days a compendium of best practices that I invite you to uh, to visit on our website and to consult it to to learn about very concrete actions that our members, SME organizations, and social partners at national level are doing to support young people enter the job market also by apprenticeship. And I would also like to tell you a bit more about the role of. Um, national social partners and SMEs organization than the national, local and uh, regional level to support entrepreneurs uh, via awareness, uh, awareness raising and, and campaigns uh, targeting um, uh, entrepreneurs and young people uh, towards uh, apprenticeship. So, for example, um, for campaigns that target uh, uh, employers, our member in Croatia um, continuously organizes Organizes this type of campaigns to promote, especially to young uh, entrepreneurs, 
the, the, the importance of uh, uh, hiring apprentices in their companies and to become uh, potential mem mentors for them. Uh, and, and they do this by organizing info days, workshops and webinars. Our member in Luxembourg, the Chamber of Trades and Crafts, uh, Chambre des Métiers, uh, they also joined forces with other stakeholders and they uh, created an apprenticeship campaign uh, to motivate business owners to continue training apprentices and to pass a strong message to students that apprenticeship is a safe way to start their professional career. Or for example, our member in um, in Greece, who developed a guide to strengthen the role of SMEs in apprenticeship programs, uh, directly targeting uh, entrepreneurs. And um, this guide provides them with very useful information through, for, for all the stages of the implementation of an apprenticeship program and also how um, uh, to do campaigns uh, to, to attract uh, young people. So these were some examples of campaigns uh, to, towards, let's say, more the employees Employers, but also our members are active at national level uh, towards young people. And one of the best examples that we learned this year and I'm, I'm happy to share is, for example, the Summer of Vocational Training, uh, which is an event, um, a series of events organized by our member in Germany, ZDH. Uh, and and they are, uh, in, in 2022, they did the second edition. Uh, after a very successful edition in 2021 with more than 800 regional events um, and achieved more than 2 million views in the social media. Um, in this way, uh, and, and thanks to these events, uh, numerous young people and their parents were reached uh, out and informed about uh, um, this job, career and, and learning opportunities in the, in the context of dual training. And many companies were also motivated to offer and, and fill their training places. Um, another example is from our member in Italy, Confartigianato, where they organize a, a, an event um, since 2015 in the region of, uh, of Lombardy, specifically in the city of, uh, of Bergamo. And they bring together all the stakeholders and uh, local and uh, level um, to, to to ensure that companies and, and young people in, a, in a high school, they meet uh, and they um, uh, get acquainted one each other with the, with the possibilities of, uh, of training places as well. Or um, another example, last one uh, from CMA France, um, which organizes another uh, very successful event called the Open Day event with the training centers that are managed by the chambers of trades and crafts uh, and organized between, uh, for example, in January and February 2022, uh, a national open day uh, to recruit uh, apprentices on a large scale. So these are just a few examples that I wanted to share with you and I invite you uh, to learn more on, on our compendium. Thank you. Many thanks, Valentina. A lot of uh, food for thought and interesting information. Um, please make sure you share with us the compendium on all these practices when, when you have it published, because we can also link it in our EAFA library and also uh, get some inspiration uh, for our uh, spotlights uh, for the European Year of Skills. I'm sure that will be useful. And also on all these very interesting examples of awareness race, in. Maybe we can follow up together for the future and see which ones were considered more effective uh, and, and maybe uh, the people in charge can uh, feature in some of our events or, or news um, in, in the future for other countries to, to get some insights on, on how to reach out better to, uh, to SMEs. So thanks a lot. Um, and now I want to switch um, to Paula. So uh, we want to put the attention on an Erasmus Plus funded project that is in the pipeline in Catalonia, in Spain. I don't want to say too much, uh, but I heard one element of this innovative project will be to have business ambassadors promoting apprenticeships. So could you tell us a bit more, Paula? Of course, thank you very much for the invitation. From PIMEC, we're glad to have the opportunity to participate in this live discussion. 
about the promotion of apprenticeships uh, to SMEs. So before talking about the project, I will start with a brief description of what PIMEC is. We are today the most representative small and medium employers confederation. In this context, we work along with public administration and the most representative social agents in Catalonia, taking an active role in the training and employment policies. Um, as we already know, SMEs are the 90% of the companies and provide the 70% of the jobs in the country. So therefore, we believe efforts should be focused on designing policies to that promote employment and the development of competitiveness of SMEs. One way to do it is by improving bed and especially apprenticeships. This is one of our priorities since we believe they can respond to the company's real need. They are a tool that can contribute to solving the problem of the mismatch between the supply, the people's skill, and the demand for skills, the labor qualification needs. Um, they incorporate professional skills required by the sector, allowing the company to have an active role in the training of these new skills in students. So we really value the importance of VET as a way of bringing out the talent and overcome the challenge we face as a business um, world and to be sustainable and more competitive. In this context, PIMEC is, work, is participating in many European and national projects that work to meet these objectives. And one of them is the one that I come to present you today, APP Intern or Apprenticeships Internetwork, bringing together bad institution and enterprises. This is a project led by the Greek Public Employment Service, and it was launched in 2020. In it, eight organizations are participating, including us, we are four entities from Greece, two from Italy, and one from Belgium, and one from Spain, of course, us. And we count also with the support of the municipality of Hospitalet de Llobregat as an associated partner in the project. This EU initiative aims to strengthen the links between apprenticeships, bed, and corporate responsibility by inviting employers to offer apprenticeships, places, and jobs to vet students and graduates. How do we do it? For you to imagine, the project is focused on the creation of an online platform called Apprenticeships Internetwork, and this will host three different uh, national career hubs, one in Greece, one in Italy, and another one in Spain. And the, the idea is to connect in each uh, country, the business sector, as well as the people that are studying or are already graduate, and the vocational and educational training centers. These synergies are not only at the national level, but at a European level too, because apart from having the platform in English and in the national language, users will be informed about the development in, in, other, in the other two countries. By this, we ensure there's a direct exchange of good practices, expertise, information, and knowledge uh, between each career hub. Also, in each of them, we will facilitate it its career hub will facilitate the students and the graduates the search for apprenticeship or jobs through this database and at the same time will enhance their skills by offering guidance and organizing seminars, webinars, information ever, events, and many others. So in this way, it can support the, their contact with employers and also with the labor, other labor market stakeholders, and it ensures their knowledge and exchange about the important sectorial issues. On the other hand, we can also find that the platform provides the companies with a space where they can match students with the, inter with the apprenticeships they are offering, and also they can find potential candidates for their jobs, vacancies. So in this way, the project also responds to the need that some companies um, have, where most of the time they don't know where to look uh, for or find students for their apprenticeship. So how organization can participate in the platform? There's two different ways. On the one hand, we can find bed related institutions and associations, social partners, municipalities, and chambers, and they will contribute to the efficiency of the career hub by inviting local enterprises, employers, and employers associations to join the platform so they can be directly linked with these apprentices, uh, these graduates, and these future employees. On the, other hand, on the other hand, we have this innovative aspect we were talking about, uh, that is the existence of a new intermediary role called business ambassador. 
This role, briefly explained, gives the opportunity to, est uh, to establish um, professionals, employers or other business staff to participate in this platform by being the responsibles of informing and advising students and graduates on current labor um, market needs and trends, other occupational problem solving, business development prospects, and many others. This role of business ambassadors um, is volunteer, and this is also a way to demonstrate both the personal and their business interest in the corporate social responsibility. In the long term, these uh, career hubs can be constant. Um, we expect them to be constantly updated and enriched through the agents that participate in the platform, motivating in this way the mobility between countries and also connecting them. Um, we, the project, and we want to create a learning and training network, a space where these, uh, where the, um, being an aggregator of this training offer, where the key bad um, actors can interconnect between each other and building this uh, online community. Just um, uh, the project is supposed to end the next year in 2023. At this moment, um, it's not finished yet, but we Greece is working in the piloting of the platform. And when they finish, um, Spain will proceed and Italy with this piloting. And for this piloting, each country, we have choose 10 occupational specialties where the platform will be based on. And in the case of Spain, we've, cho we've choose uh, specialties from five different sectors, uh, the sector of hostelry, the sector of tourism, health, energy and sustainability, and digitalization. So um, if anybody uh, wants more information or if in is interested in the role of business ambassador, I will be more than happy to provide you this information after this session. Many thanks, Paula. Indeed, very interesting project. I would be grateful if you could share some more information. I understand that the project is ongoing, so you don't, you may not have like a full report on how it went and so on. But if you could uh, share already some inception um, points and uh, and once the the platform is ready, the link that would be great, and we can share it in in the EAFA website for all our members uh, that may be interested. So now we will switch to another country and to another region uh, to Tuscany in Italy, where we will be learning more about a project launched in the wine sector. So first, we will hear from Miriana, who represents the regional authorities, and then we will hear Sergio, Sergio, who represents an SME that has participated in the project. So Miriana, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anna, and good afternoon from my side. Uh, just a brief uh, presentation about uh, our uh, uh, latest apprenticeship uh, policies, the one targeted to um, a very important sector across Tuscany, which is the wine ones. Uh, next slide, uh, please. Uh, the first things, uh, some information about uh, the importance of this sector, the, the wine sector across Tuscany. We are talking about uh, uh, 12,700 uh, 12, uh, uh, wineries, uh, and we have uh, uh, across Tuscany, which I think uh, you you know uh, as a region, but also from uh, um, a, a wine perspective, because our wines are very well known across the world. We have uh, 58 uh, recognized uh, geographical indication, um, 52 uh, DOP and 6 uh, IGT. This is quite important to represent the um, uh, importance of the sector. We have to mention that uh, our wineries are, uh, um, uh, in most of the cases, uh, uh, small and medium enterprises. We have a multitude of uh, small companies. Uh, so uh, for the importance of this sector and of course for the dimension of uh, our uh, companies, uh, um, for us uh, it's important to um, support um, the competitiveness uh, the, the, of the sector and of course also uh, to, uh, to help uh, companies to innovate uh, uh, in, in uh, sometimes also how they uh, train their um, employee 
uh, and how they uh, perform uh, from uh, equality uh, point of view. Uh, so it's important to support also from the VET uh, um, perspective. Next one. Um, to, to know better what kind of uh, um, the wine technician uh, pathway is, in Italy we have uh, two uh, wine technician. Uh, the first one is a tertiary level, the enologist. This is a qualification uh, which is obtained uh, attending uh, a P uh, program which lasts uh, three years. And the second one, which is the, the one of, uh, of our uh, apprenticeship uh, policies, is uh, at post-secondary level and it is named Wine Technician. This is a post-diploma specialization which lasts uh, uh, one year. Um, just to let you know how important is uh, this kind of uh, uh, program, uh, the first school of uh, viticulture and uh, enology in Italy uh, was founded uh, in... Um, um, in the ninth century, so uh, it's very, very important uh, this uh, uh, this program, and of course it uh, exists uh, apart also uh, from our uh, support. So um, now we have uh, a new uh, wine technician program, which is uh, uh, a five years uh, program plus this one here of specialization and. Um, it is a five-level uh, EQF uh, uh, program. Uh, we started to, um, to, um, uh, to adopt uh, this new apprenticeship uh, support, uh, thinking about how important uh, is uh, uh, this professional across our companies. And also we thought that um, it's important to uh, let uh, companies know that how they... Uh, train uh, people uh, inside the company is very, very important. So uh, from one side, we had uh, some requests from companies to, um, to provide for uh, better programs uh, in terms of that in order to uh, let them uh, have uh, the people that, the skilled people that they need uh, in order to provide for the quality of our uh, wines. And from the other side, we had uh, this specific program uh, at that level, uh, but not uh, in apprenticeships. And so we decided to move uh, this, uh, this uh, program uh, from an ordinary way of providing it to this uh, new apprenticeships uh, program. Next one, please. Uh, I already mentioned it, but why moving to apprenticeships? First, it allows to engage companies uh, within the regional uh, skills ecosystem. I think this is uh, one of the most important things because uh, we regions, uh, uh, each one of us, uh, has got um, uh, regional uh, skills ecosystems across uh, different sectors, but um, being part of an ecosystem doesn't mean that you recognize uh, of being part of it. So it's important to engage companies and to let them know and to, to let them have on board because uh, they, together with us, can provide for better VET programs. And also apprenticeships uh, allow to strengthen the relationship uh, from the VET system and educational system uh, and companies. Uh, and this allowed to enhance the design process, uh, of course, the uh, VET design uh, um, process. Uh, lastly, mm, it promotes uh, a virtual exchange. Anna was telling uh, about it uh, in the uh, first words that uh, she said uh, in the opening of this event. Uh, the exchange of knowledges and professional practice uh, in the wine sector, it's important. So. Uh, even uh, the, the schools and the company working together, they can benefit from each other. From one side, having these people trained in the way that the labor market needs, but also from the school side, they can benefit from the companies because they can be uh, in the first line and knowing uh, which kind of innovation they are providing for in terms of uh, uh, procedures uh, in, in their uh, wine uh, 
production and also, for, uh, for example, we are talking about digital transition uh, or green transition, each kind of uh, innovation that companies uh, are um, providing for in their uh, processes, school can be, uh, of course, in the front line and knowing uh, these kind of innovations uh, very, very quickly. Next one. Next slide, please. Um, what kind of regional support uh, we are providing for? Uh, first of all, we designed a new model uh, for the um, training of these uh, wine technicians. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the, the first thing is to have on board uh, small and medium enterprises and companies in general. Uh, the aim of the regional support was, uh, and still is, to support the co-design of this kind of course uh, uh, because uh, uh, this uh, program is designed uh, together with uh, uh, the companies. So schools provide for uh, the co-design of the apprenticeship program with companies. And so we support the uh, didactic and organizational link between the training institution, in this case, uh, the vocational school and the companies. Uh, and in this way, we raise uh, uh, the quality the, uh, of the apprenticeships. So we have uh, um, some uh, uh, activities that the regional grant uh, is covering and the target of this regional grant uh, uh, is not the companies. Uh, mm, they are not the companies, the, the target of this kind of regional uh, uh, financial support, but instead the school because uh, as I mentioned before, this program is already existing before these uh, uh, specific uh, apprenticeships uh, support. But it was uh, made uh, with um, school alternation, not apprenticeships, but it was uh, uh, school alternation limited from in, in terms of hours that is dedicated to in-company uh, training. And so we decided that it would be preferable to sustain uh, the uh, co-design by supporting schools because they have to provide for a different way to uh, train uh, students. Uh, and so um, the, the grant uh, is targeted to them. Uh, which kind of activities? First, I mentioned before, the co-design of this dual apprenticeships uh, program. Each kind, uh, uh, each student uh, and each company uh, involved in the program as a specific uh, uh, and uh, personalized uh, dual apprenticeships uh, program uh, in the framework of the general uh, pathway. And we support also the tutoring uh, to facilitate the connection uh, among uh, uh, skills that are acquired uh, during the training at the school, but also with skills that uh, uh, we provide uh, together with uh, the company um, during the internal uh, learning. And the last thing is that uh, if uh, is needed, we can provide also for uh, financial support for realigning uh, skills in case uh, students are needing to, um, uh, to improve some skills that uh, maybe uh, they need to uh, improve. So, uh, which kind of training model uh, uh, this is? Uh, um, first of all, uh, this annual uh, pathway is uh, 1,056 uh, hours. And this uh, amount of hours are uh, divided in internal learning and external learning. External learning is the one provided at school, and it is maximum the 60% of this uh, uh, total amount uh, uh, of hours uh, the um, 1056 and internal learning of course is the one provided uh, in, in company training because we are asking them to provide for that kind of training and uh, the um, program should be flexible this is very important because uh, uh, this is a way to support integration be between uh, uh, skills uh, uh, and knowledges that are uh, provided at the theoretical level and the 
part which is provided uh, in company and which is uh, the one uh, dedicated to technical and practical uh, components. Uh, next one, please. Uh, in terms of regional uh, contribution for the co-design, uh, it is uh, uh, 2,000 euro for each uh, uh, apprentice. And we have also uh, 3,000 euro for uh, uh, the tutoring of each apprentice. So uh, totally uh, for each apprentice, uh, Tuscany region supports uh, uh, 5,000 uh, euro as a total amount. Next one, please. Which kind of results uh, we, we had? Uh, in, um, first, we have uh, uh, in, we involved uh, in the first uh, uh, edition of this uh, program 71 uh, small and medium enterprises and uh, uh, percent, sorry, and 29% uh, of large enterprises. Just to let you know that this is representing uh, the uh, reality of the sector, the wine sector across Tuscany. Uh, the 87% uh, of these companies uh, strongly appreciated this training model and also they declared that they would like to be involved in further edition and of course they already are because we are now providing for the second edition uh, which will end in July 2023 um, and the total uh, number of the companies that we engaged in the first edition, they think that this kind of training model, uh, the training model adopted, um, provides for an effective balance among uh, the internal training and external training provided at school, uh, if considering, of course, the kind of organization uh, uh, the companies uh, has adopted to produce uh, uh, wine. So, it's important to, uh, to, to mention this kind of results and we are now uh, trying to uh, improve this kind of regional support, uh, uh, thinking about uh, 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 European Social Fund, uh, the new programming period, because it's important to engage more uh, small and medium enterprises, which is uh, something uh, strategic for us because they are uh, not only the backbone of the European uh, um, economy, but also uh, this is the case for Tuscany region. And so uh, this is uh, uh, our experience. And I hope uh, um, in the last slide, the next one, uh, we have uh, uh, my contacts and we remain uh, at your disposal in case you need more information. Many thanks, Miriana. A very interesting example uh, for the wine industry. Did I understand correctly? You intend to to fund this this support through the ESF uh, in your region, but uh, until now, was it also funded with the ESF at least partly? No, uh, not yet. So we are starting uh, in 2023 because uh, until now we used the national funding dedicated to apprenticeship. So the first two editions were national uh, funding, not European Social Fund. So for us, it's very important to start to improve uh, this kind of uh, uh, policy using ESF. That's indeed very good news. Thanks a lot also to see that the EU funds are uh, allocated to these very useful projects. And now uh, we will switch uh, to Sergio, to Sergio, to, to see a bit what's the, the experience of the company, one of the companies that benefited from this program. So Sergio, please. I'm calling from Marchesi Marciani, that's a winery in Chianti Classico. And I, I try to explain for the best I am. Um, I'm not used to speak English every day, so I'm sorry. So uh, the Mazzei family has been associated with wine since the 15th century. Ser Lapo Mazzei, a Florentine merchant, first used the term Chianti wine in a letter in December 1398. Still today, 25 generations later, the Castello di Fonterutoli is owned by the Mazzei Marquises, who produce a high appreciated wines year and export it all over the world. 
Given such long and historic presence in the area and its closeness to the community, the winery has always felt the need to collaborate with all institutions, not least schools. The Bettino di Casoli Institute was the natural outlet for this desire, given an indisputed quality of work career out there. Over the years, we also expanded our collaboration with other Italian companies and the presence of young students in the company has become a constant. Graduates in different disciplines have passed through our winery and wine health. Therefore, this new challenge has found us ready and happy to welcome trainees in dual alternance. For us, being able to make a significant impact on the training of future generations of enologists and agronomists can only be desirable. The students here at the company are not parked, but immediately become part of the production teams, both outside and inside the winery, always supervised by our tutors and under the supervision of the teachers. The experience were therefore not only varied, but also of great quality. Given that our companies has always been innovative and attentive to modern challenges. In the future, we would like to be able to improve the integration with the Institute so that we can transfer part of the demands that the labor markets doesn't not fulfill direct to the growth and preparation phase. In this may we could develop an even more meaningful partnership with those involved. In clear, it's clear that we are talking about a process that it's only at the beginning and not without problems. Some including, perhaps, for example, the training of company tutors. It's essential for the synergy with teachers to be as optimal as possible. Then, the cost incurred by the company in the phase of insertion of and control of the students. It's clear we are talking about a work placement without uh, reduced margins, if not zero. Marchesi Mazzei believes strongly in the form of direct experience with the involvement of the forces in the field to make the link with the territory and its young people ever stronger. If, after all, sorry, if, after all, Chianti is so famous, it's, over, it's not only to splendid environmental and natural predispositions, but much to the work that enlightened enterprises, public and private institutions, and all citizens have done and still to do on a daily basis. Perhaps it's time to straighten these ties and this could be a small but significant steps. So I'm finished and Many, many, many thanks, Sergio. I'm happy to hear that it uh, it was a good experience and you would like to continue in the future uh, with some enhanced collaboration. So, um, yeah, very interesting. I, I had never uh, had uh, a hint of what it would imply in uh, apprenticeships in, in the wine sector. So it was a very interesting example. So now we will move on to the second part of the discussion uh, where we will explore the challenge that SMEs face when participating in apprenticeships. These barriers may be there before, during, and after the apprenticeship program um, and experienced differently depending on the size of the SME and the country or the sector they operate in. So I suggest we start again with, with Valentina from SME United. And uh, we would be very interested to, to, to have your views on, on the different challenges that SME faced, also considering the different difficulties every member state uh, has because they, they, they face very different situations. 
Thank you, Anna. As you rightly mentioned, uh, there are differences among member states with countries that have uh, longer traditions of apprenticeship system compared to the others. And despite the difference, we could still identify three major recurrent challenges that might uh, discourage uh, SMEs to offer um, apprenticeship uh, placements for apprenticeship. Well, the first one, it's a very renowned one, is the administrative uh, burdens or the bureaucracy that uh, is attached to um, the apprenticeship itself. The second one also um, quite known is the financial costs that are linked uh, to, to an apprenticeship placement. And then uh, the third one, um, it's the successful matching between the company and the candidate. And therefore, uh, the, the best tools that uh, might promote uh, apprenticeship uh, are uh, responding directly to these uh, challenges. So uh, I would say support to SMEs with, uh, with the administrative burdens and also providing the adapted financial support. But as I highlighted in the um, in the first part of our debate, uh, campaigns uh, targeting entrepreneurs and uh, small company, uh, highlighting the role of apprenticeship as an investment uh, rather than a, than a cost, and then uh, the support in the matching process and, and, and some career guidance in the education uh, uh, pathways. Let me say and underline here that the, the role uh, that employers organizations have, um, it's quite unique because they can really support uh, uh, the, the companies they represent, SMEs and uh, in particular micro enterprises to engage in, uh, in apprenticeship. And um, for example, in the member states where uh, apprenticeship is a long tradition, the employers organizations and chambers, they provide a large variety of uh, support services um, that go from facilitating the compliance with formalities or reduce the, the administrative burdens for SMEs. For example, drafting templates uh, that are useful, for example, for the apprenticeship agreement or uh, for the learning outcomes and supporting in general with all the administrative uh, tasks uh, including, for example, dedicated services for how to assess the, the learning outcomes after an apprenticeship. Another dimension that uh, I would like uh, to, that I've already mentioned and I would like to underline again is the um, how, how we can best support SMEs to select the most adequate candidates uh, that have not only the right competencies or the right attitude toward uh, training in a company, but also the, the social skills. And this can be done, for example, very successfully by organizing pre-interviews. Um, career guidance is definitely the, the best tool here. And um, the last point I would like to raise is um, to, to have more support in place uh, to, to raise the awareness of, of SMEs and entrepreneurs on, um, on how to access the financial incentives that are uh, in place in the different member states. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Valentina. Very interesting points. Um, now we will see if, if Paula shares your views or has anything to add uh, from the regional perspective. Um, yeah, we actually share most of the points. Um, in fact, PMEC three years ago, before COVID, we conducted a study uh, to see what motivates SMEs to participate in these different apprenticeships models. And this clearly showed the main reasons, the main reasons why they participate, but it also showed the challenges that they were facing. Um, one of the main reasons why here SMEs do not participate have to do with the lack of resources to dedicate to adequately train apprentices in their learning, as well as the administrative management due to this excessively bureaucratic process. Um, this process often requires a lot of time, a lot of resources, which SMEs often are lacking. And not only this, but also they do not have the structures to absorb all these responsibilities that comes with the training. Not only the, those involved in the training itself, 
but also everything that surrounds it, administrative work, coordination, company material, fa uh, facilities, and many others. Um, another reason for the low participation in apprenticeships is that they use often do not know the system well enough. In fact, main reasons why SMEs here, especially the micro SMEs, micro uh, companies are not willing to participate um, is the in, in either, inadequate um, information about the system and the lack of resources to assume all these requirements of the apprenticeships model. Um, here in Catalonia, at the same time, we uh, bet schools have not got any resources, enough resources, um, so they can dedicate to inform and to encourage SMEs to participate in these apprenticeships. And this is key because the collaboration with an SME in apprenticeships requires different proced procedures. It is not the same to organize 25 apprenticeships with 25 companies that organize those 25 in five big corporates. So in this sense, we are trying to promote apprenticeships models through various communication and dissemination act actions to facilitate networking between the SMEs and the schools. Uh, in fact, to provide SMEs with this support um, uh, is one of our goals, and we're working on the creation of what we call Mancomunal Mentor um, in, with the City Council of Barcelona. Briefly explain this mentor is a support structure for the companies um, that will inform and encourage them on the same uh, that the ones that are on the same sector or activity will coordinate the companies with pet schools will participate in the preparation of these apprenticeships activities or learning plans will mono monitor the activities and apprentice the apprenticeships they develop and many other functions. Um, this initiative is not only involving vet schools and companies, but also employers associations. And we are really sure that this will contribute to increase the participation of SMEs in the dual vet system on the next year. In this project, we are still at the first stage. Uh, we're working on the, the detection of the sectors with more needs, such as installers, for example, that have a high need of, to incorporate these trained professionals and at the same time really need the support to participate in apprenticeship because they are uh, mostly SMS. And lastly, and coming, coming back to the first point I made on my intervention, many of the problems that SMEs are facing are contemplated in the project that I just told you about, the Apprenticeships Internetwork, uh, because through this contact between the different actors in the bed scene, the processes and actions can be simplified and also facilitated. It is easier for the student to find a company where to do its apprenticeships, and it's also for a company to find the students and the schools with whom to participate in the apprenticeships. We really believe this project can increase competitiveness and encourage economic growth, and at the same time, it can decrease youth unemployment. Also, and lastly, apart from the project I just mentioned, for the promotion of participation, participation of SMEs in apprenticeships, we also recommend to introduce a certain degree of flexibility and a new organizational, organizational initiative. In this training role of employers, um, the employer must be enhanced by other actions to be analyzed, such, for, such as uh, tax relief, social benefits, advances via grants and funding lines, social recognition, among many others. Many thanks, Paula. A very, very important points uh, that you made. Let's see now with Miriana what she has in mind, if she shares your views or she has additional also obstacles uh, that they are facing in Tuscany. Well, I think that the, uh, my colleagues uh, um, provide for um, an important overview of um, the different uh, uh, barriers that uh, small and medium enterprises uh, encounter in uh, accessing apprenticeships. Uh, from our side, I can say that uh, the national uh, uh, legal framework for apprenticeship in Italy, which is uh, uh, a job contract, uh, um, it's quite huge for them, so 
uh, this is the first uh, barrier that they encounter and it's important to work on it and we already uh, started to do together with the national ministry and the, the other uh, regions and uh, autonomous provinces across uh, our country uh, starting from uh, the first level of dual apprenticeship. Uh, it's important uh, to mention uh, this, uh, um, this document uh, uh, which uh, was uh, uh, developed from the national ministry and as regions because it's the first step to, um, to, to let this uh, dual apprenticeship system to, more, to be more accessible uh, to companies, but also to schools, because uh, it's very huge uh, also for them, and we have to mention it. Um, I agree also with uh, Sergio Corridori um, that uh, one of the things that maybe it's important to support uh, is uh, training of tutors. Uh, maybe um, the tutor is, uh, of course, uh, a great uh, and skilled worker, but it could be that uh, he is not aware of which kind of uh, um, action he has to uh, or she has to provide uh, uh, with the apprentice. So it's important to train them from uh, a dual uh, apprentice uh, perspective in order to provide them with the skills that they need to be um, very good uh, uh, tutors. Uh, and so they can accompany uh, our apprentice uh, across their uh, pathway which, because uh, it's a very uh, good quality uh, one and also uh, as the recommendation uh, uh, of the um, 2018 uh, um, told us uh, the pedagogical support uh, is very important to improve the quality of apprenticeships. Um, I have also to mention that for us uh, this wine technician apprenticeship program was a challenge started in uh, uh, 2017 so uh, some years uh, has passed on before arriving last year uh, to the first edition of these uh, apprenticeship programs and we encountered some uh, um, no uh, from uh, uh, companies uh, side because uh, companies uh, uh, they already had uh, uh, the students uh, for a few hours uh, in this alternation way alternation uh, school to work uh, way uh, and we, sa we said them that uh, this is a, a new model, training model, which they should try and have this uh, um, model uh, uh, as an example of what they can provide to enhance uh, the quality also of the vocational education and training system. So they started to work on it. And as I mentioned before, they all agree that this is a very good way to provide, uh, uh, to have uh, uh, skilled uh, workforce and so they wish to be um, engaged again so this is a success but uh, it's important to uh, to work not to end uh, with this success but to uh, understand what um, I was saying before uh, uh, that is that we have to uh, to work uh, um, in a, a skill governance perspective, which is quite important, because uh, we are not providing for um, vet, per, vet courses uh, um, for uh, for our ideas. Uh, we provide for we should provide for vet uh, uh, programs because they uh, are what the companies needs because they should be a real chance uh, for our youngers and also sometimes also for adults, but this is the way that we should uh, work on it. Thank you, Miriana. Uh, now we will see if, Ser if Sergio uh, has anything to add from the SME perspective. So, um, just, just we have say, um our winery is, is a nation one, but the staff is very young. So we look to the uh, institutes and the guys with very, very attention because we think about the um, important to improve the uh, school uh, uh, preparation with the 
um, um, with the um, work in the in the wineries and so in the, in, in the companies. So um, we look to apport something new to the uh, to the school and uh, uh, and important that we, we could have to the um, to, to, to put the guys in front of the work uh, reality and for the merchants and the market problems that we have every day to to make on um, so at the moment uh, we need to um, to put out uh, what's uh, what's the 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 critical um, point that we have every day on our works and to have here the guys before they put out of the schools and so to have also the possibilities to improve our um, uh, our problems uh, through the preparations it's very very important for us so we also um, think that uh, it's important that some um, some wineries in, in this zone uh, as also over there uh, to make some out of their potentialities to the to the societies so to the um, to our town to our citizens because uh, it's important that we could transfer no, not only our necessities but also our um, imagines our dreams to others so this is what we, we, we could uh, we could talk about this type of integration with schools it's not only some problems you know because uh, perhaps we have to put the guys every day on the normal activities and you know that it's not so simple because they have not so preparation we have to make sure that they not involved in some problems um, also in the winery or in the wine house uh, we have a machine we have an industrial uh, mechanism so it's not so simple to have the um, to, to, to guarantee that it's 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 okay that the guys is of there every day but this is it's important because also we have some guys that not not that coming out from the school and not know what's the 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 work is the work that 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 um, sorry um, what they found out, out of the schools okay so we think that it's important that the companies and school work together to make sure that the guys come out with with some future in 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 our in our sectors okay thanks many thanks sergio i i don't know if you would like something uh if you would have anything to add on the lessons that you have learned uh to share with other smes uh, or if you have any message to pass uh, to education uh, providers and, and policy makers on on the lessons learned and, and recommendations but we have mm, many younger in this type of uh, operations because last year is the, our first one and this is the second year and it's not so simple to understand immediately what the problem is but i think that the the, the best practice in, in the moment is to involve the companies to the operations inside and outside the schools so not not leave the companies just like um, the final um, object of the project 
but involved in the middle of the project. Ask what the companies need and the companies so propose what we, we want to do with the guys that come in here. Okay, many, many thanks, Sergio, uh, uh, for your uh, intervention and, and your insights. Now, um, Miriana, uh, with you, if, if you have any reaction to Sergio's intervention uh, and also what you have learned over the course of your project um, uh, for wine technician in Tuscany. Well, I am very happy uh, to hear from Sergio that they would like to be involved uh, from the from the middle of the project, not not only in the end. Uh, this is what I said about uh, uh, skill governance. It's important to have companies on board in designing this kind of uh, vet programs and policies. Otherwise, uh, we decide by our side, but we can uh, provide for the right. Uh, um, for the right uh, results. Uh, so what work, uh, uh, what is working uh, um, in this kind of project? I think that uh, a great uh, way that the school uh, sh um, decided to, to use uh, to provide for these apprenticeship programs uh, was to um, collaborate uh, with the uh, intermed intermediate uh, subject, uh, which is a, a labor um, a sort of um, pub, uh, employment service, but a private one, not uh, from the public network. They are uh, an agency for employment, and so they provided for all the procedures that, uh, uh, from a legal uh, point of view, were um, perceived as uh, very huge for the school, because, uh, as I mentioned, this is a, a regular uh, job uh, uh, contract in Italy, so... Um, Schools are not uh, uh, that much aware about uh, which kind of procedures they should follow. So having in mind this, I think that uh, uh, this uh, intermediate uh, uh, agency and subject uh, um, from one side helped the school to develop uh, all those procedures uh, uh, towards the companies uh, from uh, a contract point of view and also from the other side uh, helped uh, the companies uh, to uh, to be more engaged and uh, not uh, um, worrying too much about these legal procedures that uh, uh, are really, really uh, important and huge. Uh, this is what uh, is working, but uh, uh, in the next uh, um, time of uh, planning, uh, of course, we are supporting this, uh, not only the wine technician apprenticeship program, but also the other ones with different tools uh, such uh, pre-apprenticeships programs because we think it's important to start uh, uh, with uh, these new uh, kind of policies to support better the entrance of students uh, in apprenticeships. Uh, Pre-apprenticeship programs could be a great chance also for companies because they could try what kind of activities uh, uh, could be uh, the apprenticeships uh, pathway and so uh, they could learn uh, before uh, being engaged uh, in the real apprenticeship uh, pathway um, and they could be um, also more conscious of, 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 on what uh, uh, we are expecting from them. Great uh, contribution, Miriana. Thanks a lot. Um, now we will go back to, to Paula. So if you want to take stock and uh, reflect a little bit on the lessons learned and, and recommendations also based on the project that you have been involved in. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, although the project is not yet finished, we uh, have been working on it since 2020. And during this time, we've been working really hard to create this platform that responds to the need of the SMEs, the vet centers and the students. Um, no, now we are, as I said, in the phase of piloting the platform. So um, now we will see the real performance uh, that this might have in the future. Um, 
Nevertheless, we've been organizing uh, some events to raise awareness of this project, and every time it arouses curiosity and interest, and I really believe this is positive, because it means that the project is, in, is on the agenda and that responds to the need that exists today in the European SMEs. So I am really, I am really sure that this is a project that will help and empower SMEs in the use of these apprenticeships, since there will be this space to interconnect, share with practices, knowledge, news about the labor market, and many other things. Improving the offer, the quality, and the image of apprenticeships can really contribute to reduce the levels of unemployment and provide support to the enterprises. And this is what we really want to achieve. So I'm just really excited to start this new phase in the piloting to see the resort, uh, the results. And I want to take this opportunity again to say that anyone who is interested on the project or has any comment to make is more than welcome to contact me or you for any further information. That's great. Many thanks, Paula, uh, for your availability. So now, fi finally, um, Valentina, uh, would you like to make some final remarks uh, and, and make some recommendations or share lessons learned? Thanks. Thank you, Anna. And uh, yes, just to complement the, the contributions of the of the previous panelists, I would like to uh, insist of one of the main outcomes of our, of our work on this uh, annual team this year, and one of our priorities also for the European Year of Skills in 2023, which is to improve the image and the visibility of vocational education and training in our societies. Yes. And uh, our main message there is that uh, apprenticeship contribute greatly to the development of human capital and, and skills that are very strongly required by uh, our enterprises. And we do advocate for uh, modern and flexible initial and continuous VET pathways, uh, including higher VET, uh, because uh, we think that uh, uh, higher VET will really open the, the, let's say, the road for a better image also of, uh, uh, of apprenticeship in, uh, in our societies. Um, so far, we've seen that maybe VET uh, sometimes can be seen as a dead end. Uh, so we, we really think that uh, the permeability with uh, attractive uh, progression routes uh, uh, within VET as well uh, uh, between VET and tertiary education is, uh, is absolutely key. Uh, and as I said, higher VET, uh, which can provide a high level professional and uh, managerial skills for VET graduates only exists in some member states uh, and therefore we we want to promote this uh, as a uh, alternative to academic education uh, and and also to become more uh, prominent on the political agenda both at the european and national level at least this is our ambition for for next year and uh, we will continue to pass on this uh, this message and uh, just one last um example on on this i mean also our members are working uh, very hard on the, on improving already the image of uh, uh, of VET and uh, again uh, our member in Germany ZDH they are uh, since um, 2010 um, uh, exploring the 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 the, uh, the the opportunity of a nationwide campaign and and because they want to draw the uh, more attention to the skilled crafts and uh, and and also to convey a contemporary and more modern image of crafts, especially uh, to young people. And they've done this in a very creative ways, which I let you discover um, uh, through our compendium of best practices. So thank you. Sounds good, Valentina. So we've come to the end of our discussion. And, and now we will turn to the question and answer session, where we would like to hear from our audience. Huh? So I will pick up some of the questions that were posted uh, in the chat. First one is for Paula. 
um, someone is interested to know whether uh, you could elaborate a little bit more on the business ambassadors that that you mentioned um, how did you come up with this concept and what does uh, the role entail for participating in SMEs yes thank you um as i said as the project is not finished yet we are still finishing or to define in detail what are the specific role of business ambassador but as i said uh we wanted to include um the organizations that were uh, left out of this uh, that they were not pet schools or enterprises or students we want them to participate and that's how this business ambassador concept came in we wanted a figure in the platform that could be all the time updating the platform including more information um helping students to know the real mar uh, labor market needs and so um we defined this um and and we are still as the pilot is not have not started we want um the role of business ambassador to be this um professional in the bed scene that helps with the platform and can provide more information to both the enterprises and the students okay many thanks um now there is a question for miriana so for which age group is the wine technician education aimed at? Um, would you also consider involving adult learners? Okay, um, first of all, we have to, um, to, to say that uh, apprenticeships in Italy, uh, the apprenticeship, uh, the dual apprenticeship uh, uh, for higher uh, bet is uh, targeted to people aged 18 to uh, 29 years old. Uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, the wine technician is uh, a vet pathway, uh, a specialization one that you can uh, enter when you have uh, already uh, attended a five-year uh, viticulture uh, program. Uh, and after that, you can uh, uh, attend this uh, specialization year. So um, people can be aged 18 till uh, 29 years old, and uh, it could be also open to, to older people, but at the moment uh, it's not possible in Italy to have people uh, of more than 29 years old, unfortunately. But we as regions, we discussed it months ago, to suggest uh, a reform that allows also uh, people aged more of uh, 30 years to enter these apprenticeship programs because it's it's very important to have them uh, again in the labor market. Hmm. Many many thanks, Miriana. Um, now uh, mm -hmm. to Valentina. Um, I, I have a question myself. Uh, you mentioned a lot of um, activities that are provided by the social partners uh, themselves uh, or, or employers' organizations uh, to companies um, as a sort of service to, to facilitate and help them overcome of, of all these obstacles. And um, uh, the compendium that you are putting together, uh, will it show some of these practices or do you have anything published on, on, on the, uh, in this respect? Because I think that could be really inspiring uh, for some member states. Uh, yes, thank you, Anna. Uh, you will find some of this information in the compendium, and I really hope that uh, I will make sure to send it to you as soon as possible and to share it with, uh, with colleagues as well, uh, because I think it can give um, a, a good insight of what is being done and what works well so far uh, to, to give a support to SMEs. Great. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, dear participants, I think uh, we are running out of time, so I will try to make uh, some uh, summary of what we've heard today. Uh, it was a very, very rich uh, discussion. We heard about uh, good experiences, many projects, at 
Tuscany, PIMEC, SME United. Um, we will be willing to, to hear more about the results of these projects and, and the way forward, um, particularly on awareness raising and connecting the dots through these uh, platforms. Um, and it was great also to, to learn uh, real examples of uh, an apprenticeship project in the wine uh, sector involving co-design and, and financial support and how is ESF plus and Erasmus plus can be also instrumental uh, tools to experiment and also to make um, uh, funding uh, more sustainable uh, in the coming years. We heard also about uh, many obstacles on which uh, you, you all agreed, uh, sometimes very complex legal frameworks, uh, administrative burden, human and material resources, uh, issues, financial costs, matching companies with the right candidates, and, and also lack of knowledge in SMEs to, to address all this bureaucracy. You know? So we also came uh, to the conclusion that th there are certain activities that could address this, um, these problems, like uh, pedagogical support, um, guidance on funding, uh, training on selection of candidates, on, on how to assess learning outcomes, having mentors to coordinate all these organizations and, and bureaucracy, and the key role that social partners or chambers or employers organizations more in general could have in, in, in all this. No? And um, um how to to tackle the future uh, recommendations uh, in this respect uh, I, I think it's it's important to see the European year of skills as an opportunity to continue working on this on on vet and apprenticeship image uh, to sell the, the benefits of apprenticeships as, as an investment uh, a modern and flexible vet including higher vet uh, will will result in in in, in more attractive uh, vet uh, career and, and, and learning pathways. It is essential to involve companies from scratch, um, not only in the final stage, so important to define a, a very good and effective skills governance involving the companies. And, um, and, and we need to, to, to provide uh, support um, and, and sometimes even set up pre-apprenticeship uh, programs. So. We will follow up with you on all these uh, good examples uh, that, that, that you provided um, that our members uh, may be very interested in. And I think uh, that's, that's all in a nutshell. I, I would like to thank you again. It was very interesting and, and very engaging. Um, but we also would like to take a, a picture uh, of all of us together for our website, uh, if, if you don't mind. So. I, th I think we are all set and um, our technical support can take this, this nice picture. And just to conclude, I, I hope you are all uh, convinced already of the importance of apprenticeships uh, for SMEs. Uh, we have a, a nice resource also in our website, um, uh, produced also in collaboration with SME United, which is the 10 good reasons for small and medium-sized enterprises to invest in apprenticeships. And we will share with you now the, the link in the chat. And uh, that was all. It was the last AFI event of the year. Uh, we want to thank everyone for having joined us today and for having followed us the, during the past year in all of our activities. And on behalf of EAFA, I take this opportunity to wish you all the best uh, for the Christmas holidays and uh, encourage you to stay tuned uh, for uh, the next year because we have a very nice uh, plan and program uh, for 2023 that we hope you like and it's of your interest. So thanks and uh, see you soon.